Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Race and Social Weekend Preview. We are a totally jumps podcast this week. Action from Haydock, Fairy House, and Newton Abbott. So we've shelved the flat, which is Dawn is glad to hear after last week's Doncaster disaster. Dawn, how you yeah. been? Good, good. Apart from remind me of the Doncaster disaster and hitting the crossbar and the link. And um, yeah, I was worried I was losing my touch, but thank God the jumps kind of, I was able to claw my way back out. But uh, we're fully on to the jumps this weekend and Fairy House, I tell you, if you haven't been, you need to come at some stage. It's going to be three days of just horsey heaven. Okay. And Harry, good to have you back on. A couple of weeks absent, but yeah, back and round to go, refreshed. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah, all ready to go. Form has been up and down like a bloody yo-yo, but fingers crossed we can back a few winners and give you all a few winners on Easter. Okay. As I said, we've got a bit of a mixed bag and we're going to start off with Haydock, and that is the uh, one thirty. Harry, as you're back on, you can have first dibs on uh, it's a trappy little two-mile hurdle race. Cheers, mate. Yes, yeah, very trappy to say the least. Going to go with a skeleton horse here. What could go wrong? Too friendly. Nice price. Ran about six to one. Been knocking on the door. I'd scrap that last run at Kempton. I'll tell the pat the pack. Never got into convention at all. Should appreciate the better ground. If it can run to maybe two runs to go. I think it was at Huntington. Good little second. If it can run to that, it should be there. And like I said, the drying ground should help. And at six to one, you should be getting run for your money. Okay, too friendly from Harry. Are you a fan of too friendly, Dawn? Yeah, big time. Harry and Dan Skelton, uh, we've said it all season. We love seeing the aeroplanes. I want more aeroplanes. I want another skeleton Saturday because a lot of what I've been looking at over your neck of, neck of the woods, over your side of the pond, has all been towards the skeletons in some way and too friendly to me. You know, he was six last night, last time to outlaw Peter. Conhill form way back when and you know any opportunity to mention Mr Constitution Hill and um, Fort to Irish Hill who I really really like as uh, Zoffany Bay was second that day at Ascot Zoffany Bay runs at Fairy House on Monday very very good chance for Peter Fahey and um, fifth to Brazil in the Boodles fifth to Night Salute in the Juvenile Hurdle at Aintree second to Hon Public and second to Punctuation who was only beaten a bit by Irish Hill as well. I also like Wiz Kid for Dr. Richard Newland. Um, nice bit of form. First by a head to Sergeant Wilson, who was third to Tamiris. Um, yeah, second to Hon Public. Eight to Irish Hill. He faded that day, but still quite nice. Seven to Nappers Hill. Four to Hacker de Plassis. Uh, fifth, again, to Constitution Hill at Sandown in January 22nd. So either or, whiz kid or too friendly, I like the look of both of them. They're both decent prices too. So put your money where you like or maybe go for a forecast if you're brave. Not like them Cheltenham forecasts that went out the window this week. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try and just sneak a bit of value with word has it, Donna McCain's yard, eight to one. Um, Consistency is the key in this race and he is just that. He's ultra consistent horse. I think he's going to reverse the form with Bubble Dooby, Bubble Dubby, whatever it is, however you can say it. Um, two pound closer in the weights this time. I know it's not a lot, but in the past, he has reach ratings of 130. He's still only nine. As I, said, I think he always runs his race and I think he will run into a place. He might not win, but eight to one each way. That's a bit of a, a bit of each way robbery for me in the first race we're going to look at. Over to the 240 now. He's a, a staying chase, Dawn. And all of a good staying chase, as you know. Um, what do you like in this? I've gone two ways again, but I, again, I'm trying to avoid, but I couldn't. Dan and Harry, uh, seven to two, only got 10 11 on Jeffrey's Cross. Uh, Jeffrey's Cross last win was with Bridget. Now, okay, it was 371 days ago, and we're a fan of the dry spells, but they break, they break. Um, Four seconds on the bounce. So he's due a win. You know, he's he's coming close. Uh, last run, he finished 19 lengths behind Covella in a three-mile handicap at Font. Well, he was prominent and led, um, but he just, there was he was no match to the winner that day. Um, he came from Terence O'Brien. Now, Terence O'Brien, today, this is one to put into your tracker. The Emancipator won really, really well at Clonmel. 
seven length win. So Terence O'Brien originally had Jeffrey's Cross. Just something to note and stick in the tracker. My other horse, because you know the way I like to, to go for a little bit of value. Um, just seeing the announcement as well that Jack Tudor is going to be David Pipe's retained jockey now, which is great. Uh, lovely kind of combo to come together. So I went with Neon Moon as well. Now again, 361 days, another dry one, but um, he was third at Newbury to Flash Calange. Flash Calange has an entry at air on the 22nd, so it might be something to just watch. Uh, he was only four lengths behind. He was second to Cap Nord, uh, seven lengths at Ascot in the, Swin uh, the Swinley Chase, and he was sixth to Black Jerry. Now, Black Jerry won only four days ago, and he was very impressive. Um, he also was a winner of a point to point over here to uh, that horse that I tried to chase all around the place at Christmas, Unanswered Prayers. So uh, there's a little bit of nice point to point form there. So for each way value, and if you don't want to go Skeleton Saturday completely, I go with Neon Moon. Um, but the weight with Jeffrey's Cross, I think, will be to benefit him. And he's due a win. He's due a win. OK, please don't tell me it's never scout on horse, Harry. No, sadly not, mate. It's going to be one true king. Ran a really, really good race last time at Kempton. It's been actually dropped a pound since that one, since he finished third. Never one of those. Should appreciate the drying ground. Does have to carry top weight, but for me, if he can just back up one of those two last runs at 14 to 1, there are some buckets are going to be playing four places on the day. He's going to sneak in. Like I said, class horse in the race. It's been dropped down from a gallon third, 14 to 1. You can get four places. You want to crack up a race. Okay, I've got one in here, which I started backing a couple of years back and he hasn't won many races for me, but I'm not going to stop backing him until that win comes again. And he's getting very close and that small present. Certainly he's got a race like this in him. Um, no victory since January 2022. And that was a hey dot over hurdle. So another dry spell, which seems to be the common theme in this race. Um, Norton 6, the chaser. Promising fourth at Carlisle's Chase debut, third in the Lincolnshire National and Boxing Day, sixth in the Grand National Trial, albeit it's a long way behind. He's dropped to one, two, two, seven pound lower than his hurdle mark. Now he's a, he's like a bonny little horse, but I do think on his day he is highly capable, and I think he has been back. I think he started for twenty fives, and now he's sixteen. So again, I do think this is well within his compass. So it's more present for me. Moving on now, the Haydock three fifteen. Harry, again, Haydock seems solid on Saturday. If we come out with some winners or even some place money, I think we'll all be very happy. So what do you like in this? Yeah, another little trappy race. I'm going to go with Nicky Henderson horse, Highland. Outrun the odds last time. I think it was seven and a half to one when it finished second behind Emma Tom. Bit of a frustrating horse in novice company. He's been running well on handicap since. One of those, another one that should appreciate a drying ground. And it's one who's been frustrating. Uh, at the price is eight to one. If it can settle a little bit more, run a solid race, should be bang there one or two out. And like I say, eight to one in a trappy little heat should get you a little run for your money. Okay. I'm going to go with my Bobby Dazzler. Um, Alex Edwards and Melanie Rowley partnership. I'm really beginning to like them. You always take note of their horses when they're entered. They haven't got many. Um, he's shown grim glimpses of talent with three wins at Aintree. He was fourth at Channelman New Year's Day in 2022, third in the Doncaster Grade 2. This season, he hasn't been that great, really. Um, apart from the last time out in a per attempt to qualify in February in uh, Chepstow, it was a, definitely a step back in the right direction. 1-2-2, two, two, I think he's got a pound or two up his sleeve still if he returns in the same form as he did last time out. Uh, nine, nine to one, ten to one. It's a, it's a brilliant prize for me. If he returns, like you say, if he runs like a little chap today, we'll go very close. So my Bobby does that for me. Dawn, anything you stands out for you? Well, he, my Bobby Dazzler, Joe, he kind of stood out to me because he's had a wind up recently. So that could help him find his way back to, you know, a bit of glory. That's what I kind of went and I went back along there and I seen there was. Dolphin Square and Gina Bello in there too, but the wind up should make a significant difference. Apple Rock, Ben Pauling. I know we don't have Matty, so I'm not, I'm kind of punching in the dark here, but way back when he was second to Shishkin. 
So, <laughs> you know, you have a little bit if you want to go way back when, you know, I like to have a dig. Um, 97 days ago, he won his handicap, um, beating Changing Man. He won with Luca. Um, Bo Morgan is up this time. Is he Luca's brother? Wouldn't never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we need Marty for that again. But he's taken seven off. Um, but he's won three on the bounce. So, I mean, he, he, he's worth the look. I thought he was a massive price with his form, but maybe I'm missing something. And it's a it, it's a fury. Uh, the fame yeah. and glory horse for John Joe and John Joe Jr. He's five to one. Um, he was third to Thomas Moore. Thomas Moore was sixth in the Albert Bartlett this year. Um, he's second to Irish Hill, only beaten four lengths. He hung right that day at Taunton, so I think that didn't help him. Um, he won a maiden hurdle, 14 lengths in front of Harry Dallin. I think it is. He wasn't fluent, so I think he was unlucky. And he was second in a bumper, you'll like this, to Dark Raven when he was with Liz Doyle in 2021. So out of the three of them, Bobby Dazzler, the wind up, but you'd have to see if that really worked. I don't know enough about Apple Rock, but I do like the form. So I'll be pushed. It's a fury for me, five to one. I think he's nice and I think he's got rock solid there and especially with the bit of Thomas Moore, Albert Bartlett going on as well. For a minute there, I thought you were going to go off type and agree with me with the horse, but no. No, no, no. Just for interest, I might might have a fiddle, but like not much. <laughs> New and Abbott now we're going to fly off to just to the one race, Harry, the uh, 325. Um, I think it's quite a good race on paper, don't you? No, go with Dawn then. <laughs> <laughs> gone again um yeah i you know who won it last year this is what i found interesting Seddon, the plate winner right, from this yeah. year so yeah yeah so he's whatever comes out of this i'd watch um i thought i'd seen the winner because i like night in dubai he's been knocking on the door but i think it's going to be too heavy for him he was actually 13th to my my darling sam crow in the Ballymore in 2018. And um, he was fifth at Cheltenham to William Harry. It's only beaten a neck at Warwick in February. He kept on. And he was fourth at Warwick, February 24th. He was hampered at the first and made a massive, massive mistake. That whole race was a mess by the look of things. There was a lot of pulling up and falling. Um, but then, not that I'd seen sense because I very rarely do, but I went looking again and I seen, when I um, translated, it means to litigate or litigation or something, something like that anyway, it's um, Le Ligerian. Le Ligerian. I've never heard that first. <laughs> <laughs> it's Joe Tizard's anyway. Uh, Freddie takes seven off, Freddie Gingle, who, you know, he's, he's a good, good little jockey. Um, he's won three on the bounce since leaving Philip Hobbs's. He had a 17 length win at Herefordshire. Uh, his latest win was 12 days ago yeah. at Newbury, and he always looked the winner. So, sense prevailed, <laughs> and I'm going to go with the litigator, Le, 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 Le Gion, or whatever he's called. I just think it's too heavy for night in Dubai far far too heavy for him again I wouldn't mind seeing him win because of Sam Crow <laughs> it's silly I know I'm going not because of the horse but because of Sam Crow but um no I think it'll be Joe Tizards and Freddy's I think it's finally happened we've agreed on a horse for once um I really fancy it okay. you've covered everything there but three wins he's reeled off on the bounce and looking at the field they haven't got three wins between them all season so I think a fourth consecutive win is definitely on the cards. And are there any prices, Harry? I don't think there is, is there? I couldn't find any yet. No, I can't see it in a minute. It's all starting prices, which is a bit frustrating. But I think you sure enough. Well, I think he'll be favourite. What do you, do you are you with us on the Tiz Adolfs? Yeah, like I say, you've got a lot since leaving Phillips Hob, three wins on the spin, it's gone up 18 pounds, get seven off with Freddie who's a top class little jock. And it's one of those, like you said got more wind than the rest of these have in this field should appreciate conditions he wouldn't have him out after 12 days if he didn't think he could do it and like I said they're trying to catch him while he's still hot 
say three out of three for the scissors what can go wrong okay all in agreement there then i'm going to nip over the ocean now to fairy house dawn's neck of the woods um start from the 245 a hunter chase and we've possibly got another short price favorite here in ferns lock who i don't think can be opposed at all dawn no, absolutely not, Joe. He is just, I think he's the new star coming along. And I love the fact he's by telescope. He's like a big tank. He's 17 hands, but he floats, which he shouldn't be able to, you know, that way. I felt sorry for Bill away at Cheltenham. I really did. But I think old age now, and he might be getting a bit cute to racing as well. But I loved, I was listening a good while back now, it was when Ferns Lock had won at Turles. Um, and that's when I started getting excited about the horse that David Christie was on talking about him. And he said that he bought him at the sales when Winged Leader was running at Cheltenham. So he spotted this horse and he fell in love with him. And he always said he wasn't for Cheltenham this year because he wanted to mind him. And he's done a great job at that. I mean, he won 26 days ago at Garen. It wasn't as much as the 20 length win, but I'd say if you wanted to, you could have let him go off and he would have done left 10 lengths between them. So to me, he's the out and out winner here. He's going, he's going to be so exciting for next season too. And a big tank of a horse like that. He really, he catches the eye so much. You're probably looking a bill away now, second to him, but um, everything goes right for that horse. He just keeps going and going, Ferns Lock. So he's the out and out winner for me. The thing that you've got to take your hats off is they could have easily gone to Cheltenham and ruined him. It would yeah. have been, probably would have won, but what's the point? And I think that takes great patience and great training, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I think he's yet to lose a race, is that right? He's won three points and three hunter chases. Yeah, I think I think he's he's rock solid. Beaten Billaway, he's beaten a uh, dancer, he's beaten Animix. So, Harry, are we all in agreement again, or you you got no taste learn each way? No, I'm not gonna mess around with the Irish Master Dorn here. It's just one note. <laughs> Should win. You're not really gonna back it at the prices. If you are gonna have a little play, you're probably gonna stick on the straight fork as a fern long Billaway. But other than that, it's just exciting to see a horse. Could be an absolute monster for next season. Just sit back, relax. Don't need to have a bet to watch a good one run. Okay. Move on to the Mayor's Novice Chase now. Um, the 320. Um, obviously, Allegra de Vassi is going to be all the rage here. I think she just bumped into a better horse at Champ, didn't she, Dawn? Um, I don't know whether she bumped into a better horse, Joe. I don't. I, I mean, I've toughed this out with people. I think I've toughed it out with you, too. I like Impervious. I respect Impervious. We discussed about Allegory de Vassi so many times that like, she gets lonely, she gets lonely. And yeah, okay, Impervious came and she headed her and whatever else, but she didn't go out down without a fight. And I was delighted that the two girls did get a bit of a fight. The third horse as well was very, very good in the race. Um, she might've been able to catch the other two, but we'll, we're talking about this race today. I can't see her being bet. If you look, Melina's girl who won the Ulster National for Gavin Cromwell last week was second to Allegory de Vassi and was third to Allegory de Vassi. So it all, you know, stacks up nicely. Anything that's kind of finished behind her or close to her is good and has gone and won wherever you want. Um, I try to find value. I always do here. I haven't quite reached your 50 to 1 yet until... A rest wins the Epsom Derby. It's one. Have you seen Taddy's interview this week? But um, instit, in instit, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> However you say it, anyway. The other Willie's Philly. I like her at a bigger price. Uh, she was second to Party Central last year at Punchestown. That's when she caught my eye. She's only got ten nine on her. She's got Danny Mullins up. Should Allegory Devasi? get bored or tired from Cheltenham, I think she'll be there to pick up the pieces. Okay. I tried to find a, a way to take her on, but I was struggling, so I might just like just watch the race and enjoy it, Harry. Um, or you could double it up with the other as we've mentioned before. How would you play it? Yeah, it's very tricky. It's one of those 
short price favourite. If you're going to try and find a horse to finish second or a horse to beat her, I think you're just overcomplicating it. It's one of those you've got two options. You can just sit back with a couple and watch another good horse, or you can stick it with the previous one in the Hunter's Chase, probably get a few quid off, but then you can have to put a fair bit on. For me, if the jumping holds up, I know it's got jumping is a bit of a question, but it looks much better last time at Cheltenham in the Mare Chase. For me, I think it just wins. Just playing simple. Should be a bit shorter, probably go for on about seven to two on. But for me, unless you're going to whack it in a double, just sit back and watch a good horse run. Yeah, OK. Another agreement there. The last race we're going to look at is the five past five. It's the handicap hurdle grade A. I've got a right headache horse running here who I'll end up back in. Um, Harry, I think you probably know who it is, but you, you, you're at first. If it's the same one that I'm thinking of, which I've tipped up, I thought you jumped off the cliff ages ago. Is it Tax from Max? It is. Yeah. <laughs> One of those is an absolute ball leg of a horse. He's a class horse, no matter what you think. Where's the hood? But uh, she's way too buzzy in this race. Take Cheltenham out. I think it finished 18th. Just never really got in, got held up. Just never came to the race. I think you'll know how he's going to do from the first half of a circuit. If they hold him up, I think Paul Townend booked. Good sign in that. If it's held up, it can actually race without a choke and just save its energy for the last. It's one of those horses that, if you watch it on the in-play market, it probably trade around about three to one, come in the second, third, last, and it just find nothing. If it can just settle, which you're hoping Paul Townend can do, around about 12 to one, it's going to be a fair few places on offer here. I'm hoping it'll get back into around about eight with some market confidence. But for me, if it can just get settled, get a nice troll into the race, come there around about two or three out and just get played as late as possible. 12 to 1 should be a good price, but then we could be sitting here 10 minutes after the race looking like an absolute clown. Yeah. So yeah. it's just one of those. you just got to keep backing it like me and you say, mate. Fingers crossed one day it repairs the favour. He just gives me a headache. Even just watching him just gives me a headache. Positive though, Paul Town and his books. Town and Dreading five times. It's in his second, second, first, fourth and first. That's not a bad little record there. He was eight in this race last year, actually, under Danny Mullins. He was only beaten nine lengths off one three one. He is three pound higher now, but to me, this looks a weaker race than last year to negate that. So, if he's in the mood, like you, you've hit the nail on the head there. You know, early on, if he's in the mood, he just gets a bit excited. He's calm in the early stages, and he saves himself a bit to finish his race off because his race is run in the first half half a mile normally. He saves a bit. And he behaves himself. It'll be bang there. So it'd be tax and max for me as well. Dawn, tax and max, you were a lover or a hater? Not no, a hater. no, he's he, he's the type that you kind of put, you know, one of those emojis with its tongue out. He's not, nah, he's not for me. He's too inconsistent and he's just pull up just, or pull not up. I can't, he's not. You're going, you're not going back in, are you? After jumping, <laughs> you're going to hand it down. Of course I'm going back in. I was waiting for Harry to get, like, have the little bit for Jazzy Matty. And we've got a bit of a story here because Inniston is running at Newton Abbott at the, in the 140 with our Niall Houlihan up. He's taken off three. You have Mikey O'Sullivan here taking off five. Yes, okay, he's only a baby in this, really. But sure, look, he's got youth on his side. He's good looks. He's got the breeding. His Full brother is running as well. This is fairy tale stuff. And well, Delta no, work. No goes shame. No shame. You jump ship at Chowder. Now you're I running have back. No shame. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't deal with shame. Um, Delta work goes and wins the Grand National next week. So you've got the two brothers and then the half brother next week. This you couldn't write this. Um, and Gordon won it last year with Glan. Ivana Gorbachev of Joseph's, who won the Triumph Hurdle, won it in 2019. You can't not want a bit of Jazzy Matty. And I can't believe no one else wants a bit of Jazzy Matty. Um, apart from that, because I knew, I knew you were going to say you're not jumping back on, but I've got Hey Johnny in here as well. Rachel's up, uh, Tom Mullins. He's only got 10-9. Sir Gerhardt's half-brother. He... Uh, didn't run at Cheltenham because he hadn't eaten up. He was fifth to Gary, Gaelic Warrior at Dublin Racing Festival in the same race 
good time Johnny was 12th. So look, um, third to the torn in my side in Pere Pass <laughs> in the Moscow Flyer. And when he won at Turles uh, ahead of Potapova, I thought he was very, very good that day. So if we're not if gonna go with Jazzy Matty, but I am, because I want this story of the three brothers in the space of seven days on a Saturday, uh, I'm gonna go with Hey Johnny. And you can both keep tax for Max. <laughs> we'll, we'll take that deal, won't we, Harry? Yeah. Hold the tweets on Saturday <laughs> if it happens, please. I can't be dealing. <laughs> That concludes everything. Any other business? I wish I never asked, but uh, Harry, you can go first. Oh, what do you mean, that wish you never asked? Come on, mate. We don't like the flat, but we like the flat in America. So Yeah, yeah, you're people. all right. You can carry on. Yeah, going to look at the big one. Toyota Bluegrass from Kingland. Absolute crack of a race. The other day, you got tap it right at the front of the market, around about 5-2, to two, verifying at 3-1. to one. I'm actually going to go over horses 6-1, to one, blazing 7, who's beaten verifying. A really decent two-year-old for Chad Brown. I go around Ortiz, gets back on board. You have a look, classic contender last year. Didn't go to the Derby. Won the Champagne beat and verifying. Fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile ran a cracker race off the pace. Returned, and i got to say, did flop in the Fountain of Youth, which was won by Forte. Does have to bounce back from that. But at a price, is six to one when verifying who's beat twice is three to one. Tap it twice, just looks like a bloody slow horse. One at Tampa last time out, everybody was hanging on, even myself, saying, how did he win? But you're taking five to two, they're going to have to go a stupid pace. If Blazing Sevens can return off the flop in a three-year-old run, six to one is a great price. And like I said, like six to one on a horse that's beating the second favourite, I don't rate the favourite. I think it would go off around about seven to two and you'd definitely get a good run for your money. What time and what days are Harry? Um, cool. I don't know the exact time, it'll probably be around about half eleven on Sky Sports. You can get all the cards on ATR tomorrow, Saturday. Um, Saturday, okay. We'll keep an eye out for that, definitely. Dawn, any other business? Um, two things one, a shameless plug, probably out on Virgin Media Player next week or the week after. I'll be sticking the link up. My little brother did a documentary with Mark Enright, Lee Roach and Rory Cleary. It's called When Horses Run. Very, very important piece of filmmaking. So that's my shameless plug for Dale. And second piece is keep an eye out. Put them in your tracker. Crystal clear. If you wanted him at value on the flat, you probably won't get him at value on the jumps now. He's that good. The Manila man, John Nallen, trains him. And he went and bought him at Newmarket last year at the Horses and Training Sale. Horses by Harzand, you know, the great derby winner of the late Pat Smullen. And Harzand really looks like he's starting to become a really good national hunt sire. And he's in the same stud as um, Diamond Boy, the Han Press's dad and that. So one on Sunday, impressively, with Sean Bone, our Sean Bone up, who takes off seven. He's John Allen's um, nephew. So he put him back out student day yesterday sold out event a flat sold out event on a Wednesday which was great to see um he cost 15,000 he's now won them 45,000 but John says he'll go over hurdles he'll go over fences and uh he's just a great little horse crystal clear probably something to watch for the summer I cannot wait to see him go over hurdles I think he is super okay Hopefully we will be back with some bits and pieces from Sunday's racing and obviously Monday's Irish Grand National. If not, we have Aintree next week. And Harry, we've got Aintree, Air, Sandown, Punchdown. Exciting end to the season coming up. Oh, I can't wait, mate. My fingers and toes are buzzing, just waiting for it. Should be a cracking few days action. And like you said, you can't moan at the Grand National. Greatest race of them all. And like you say, absolutely buzzing. Can't wait. Okay, and obviously fairy house this weekend, Dawn. Excited about it, but the racing just keeps coming, doesn't it? Oh, it just keeps coming, John. I think I've got, if we're back on, otherwise I'll stick it on Twitter on Monday before I head up the road to the Grand National, the Irish one, I've got a decent priced winner. And I'm going to say winner, I am that confident. Very decent priced winner. Better the weekend material. That's what we like to say on this on this uh, show. <laughs> no? 
I'm not going to say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and good luck. And Harry, good luck with your American tip on Saturday. And Dawn, um, we'll look out for your uh, little brother's video. I'm sure you put a link on for everyone. So, all the best, everyone. Thanks for watching. Speak soon.